<laughs> Welcome, friends, again to another extraordinary zone. We invite you to opt out and opt into your own extraordinary. Today, I am talking with Isidro. Did I say that right? Isidro. I love Perfect. that. Kind of roll my R's. <laughs> Got to practice it. Isidro <laughs> is, is joining us today and he's going to share with us his journey his story so he's, he's an, a, a master storyteller i cannot wait for you to hear it um so get comfortable get your drink whatever you drink your coffee your wine your water your tea whatever it is you enjoy because this is going to be a whole lot of fun and we just invite you to opt out with us opt out of the ordinary and to do what you love so welcome welcome to the podcast opting out thank you for coming we just met but we're like old friends now <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. It's an honor to be here, really. And I, I love on May 25th is the official day that we are calling myself. We're calling, we're referring to, to myself as a storyteller. You, you yes, helped me with that already. Yes. Master Thank you. storyteller. Yes. Like when somebody else says Thank it, you. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's a, that's a compliment of a lifetime. I appreciate Aww, that. I've been well, working I'm glad on I could be the first one to say it because I'm not going to be the yes. last. <laughs> yes. 10 yes. years from now, we'll be on a, your, your studio somewhere and you're going to bring me back and it'll be this day that it started. So thank exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm excited about that. That's going to happen. I yes. love it. So Cedar has an amazing story, you guys. And I mean, he tells it amazingly. So um, first off, his handle, will you tell everybody kind of what your handle is on? It's a, a clubhouse and on Instagram, right? It's about the same? Sort of, yes, yes. Okay. But my handle on clubhouse is proud son of a taquero and so when if you have a, a, any experience in clubhouse the, the thing you see is proud son of and so a lot of people call me proud uh, but uh, <laughs> i'm a proud son of a taquero because i was raised in uh, on a taco truck in in california in san jose california what is uh silicon valley and uh, my parents sold food for a living and that's how they raised us that's how they were able to achieve the american dream and you know change our our generational uh i guess destiny you know we we immigrated from mexico it was tough at that time and my parents decided let's let's immigrate to the to to america and and we did we came and we were undocumented at first so it was it was tough at the beginning but uh, through luck and you know got hard work we were able to become U.S. citizens, and uh, I have every, my life as as good as it is. It's it's because people like my parents and people like uh, my my wife's grandparents, and so it you know I I feel a, a sense an enormous gratitude towards the previous generations, which is something that we're kind of losing. You mm -hmm. see people not appreciating their their elders mm -hmm. uh, and and thanking them. So. I want to reverse that trend. And that's, that's what I'm about. I'm about, you know, saying thank you to the people who put you where you're at and, oh. and honoring them by, uh, I do it with a podcast. So I have a podcast that tells the story of our, our life. I and, love that. Gosh. So what would you say as a master for a time? I remember hearing you tell the story um, that you told on Clubhouse. And for those of you who don't know Clubhouse, Google it. Um, you probably will know about <laughs> it soon if you don't right now, but um when I ask you to tell a story, because I would love for everybody to hear it, and I'm going to say like the first one that comes to mind, because I feel like there are no accidents, right? Everything happens for a reason. So I'm going to like the first story that comes to mind. I'm like, I would love to hear it. Go. <laughs> okay. Well, I have a lot of them. That's what my podcast is about. And uh, one that comes to mind is when my father, on the first day of selling, uh, when they when they got their food truck, um, and the first day he he went out to sell. Well, he came back. He had only sold uh, two tacos. That's it. And so, of course, you know, that he felt dejected. He felt like a failure. But what he did is the next day, my mom got up the same way. They got up in the morning. They prepped the truck again. And he went to that same intersection. And instead of going right, which he had done the previous day, he just decided to make a left. And that changed the destiny. So uh, he, he sold burritos. He sold tacos. He sold potato chips. He sold sodas. It, it wasn't like he got rich in one day, but it was a better, better result than the previous day. And that just that in itself tells you, right, that, you know, how many times have you faced a rejection, right? In, in that example, my, my dad was rejected. He couldn't sell mm -hmm. anything except mm -hmm. for two tacos. And, uh, and how many times have you ever seen yourself in a situation where, you know, you go for an interview and 
they they say no. Well, mm-hmm. guess what? Get dressed up with the same clothes, that same excitement, mm-hmm. and go back out there and try something a little bit different, a different direction, mm-hmm. and you might land that next job. Mm-hmm. And that that's mm-hmm. those are that those are the stories that I tell in my podcast of how something that happened in my past and how it relates today and how it has an impact on the world and how it's impacting me mm-hmm. and and hoping that that people could resonate with that so that they can you know make that nudge to change their life for the better so oh, I that's, love that's one of my that. favorite stories I got a oh. bunch of them I <laughs> yeah so we're gonna be hearing more of them oh that's wonderful I mean that's just that's a lesson in that right I mean I just yes. see you being this master storyteller and then just drawing these these lessons in life um, from real circumstances that you got to witness as a child, you know, and yeah. that form formulated, like formed who you are today, who feels the need to share these. It's not everybody has those types of lessons or or had that type of experience. And this is where it comes like it takes a community because I might not have had that example, but because you're sharing it, because you feel that call to share it the way you are. I get to hear that story and I'll, yeah. like, I'm feeling encouraged all the times where I'm thinking, you know, they said no, or I went this way and there was, the door was not open. Well, knock again, knock again, <laughs> knock on a different yeah. door, right? You know, yeah. knock on a different, a couple of different doors and come back to that door. You know, just you, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, eventually the opportunity will uh, present itself the way it's supposed to. So that is super yeah. can encouraging. I, can, can, can I add something though? And that yeah. if, you know, it, we, we get inspired by other people's stories and I believe it's not a mistake, but it sort of sides. It's, it's the cousin of a mistake. We start comparing and then we, mm. we, we, we say, well, I haven't gone through that. I didn't get raised in a taco truck, but, mm. but, and mm-hmm. we all have experiences, mm-hmm. right? We all have experiences. And the beauty about storytelling is that if you have you're able to extract those experiences in your mind and put them on paper. Mm -hmm. It's a story. Mm -hmm. And so I would encourage everybody to, even though you didn't grow up in a taco truck, something happened when you were young that led Mm -hmm. you to somewhere. And I would, Mm -hmm. you know, implore you to examine that, take some time, Mm -hmm. put the phone down, get off clubhouse Mm -hmm. or anything. And then just start, (laughs) just, just be still with yourself and start drawing some of your own experiences in your head and putting them on paper. And I could guarantee you probably have a story there and it's probably inspirational. I believe all of us have that. I love that. So that anybody can be inspired by somebody else's or anybody else's story. And everybody has a story. You have to be still long enough to be able to let it come forth and really see that you have something to offer. That is really great advice. The other thing you said that I thought was gold was the cousin of a mistake is comparing. That's awesome. <laughs> I have never heard that before, but it's true. It's just a cousin. <laughs> so that is a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. And we do it. it. I, I do it. We all do it. That There's nothing wrong with it. That's our brain. But sometimes, you know, we have to make our brains work a little bit harder. The uh-huh. brain is our, it's, a, it's supposed to be serving us, right? And that's sometimes right. we allow the brain to do all the work and uh-huh. it gets us into bad habits. Uh-huh. And so, you know, the brain is like the mind, it's our servant. It is, yeah. It's supposed to be helping us. So if you stand still for a little bit and you tell it, this is where I want to go, mm-hmm. you know, it takes a lot of effort, but it'll take you there. It, you're you know, if you believe right. in good, a- it'll bring good. I believe that I've seen that and I'm, I'm totally with you. I also think with a good attitude, like you just start writing your own story, right? You look at things, yes. things will just happen. I'm one of those too, that I just, I have to come on your show next time and share some of my stories because I have some very interesting <laughs> ones. <laughs> yes. So that'll be fun. You can like, I can share my stories with you on your, on your uh, podcast. If you do guess, that would be a whole lot of fun to laugh and, and even sometimes probably cry. You might have all kinds of, I'm kind of tend to be on the laughing side of things. Cause I feel like I laugh to keep from crying, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. and then cry sometimes later, but, but it's also fun <laughs> to kind of laugh in the midst of, of things, you know, knowing, but this is really neat. I just, I love hearing this from your perspective. I love, like, I'm excited to see where it's going to go. So you also, what's the name of your podcast? The name of the podcast is 10,000 tacos. So the one zero 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 and tacos. Um, 10,000 10, tacos podcast. 10,000 tacos. And what's the, yeah. uh, the, the URL or the address? Is it .com? You could, yes, you could actually write it all out. But in mm-hmm. today's society, we, we don't have patience. We don't have time for that. So I <laughs> also have 10K tacos, right? And so it's 10K tacos. I also just recently 
uh, found a, um, uh, a, a URL that's, I'm going to try to implement. It's tacos, tacopod.com <laughs> because I'm going to try to venture into the e-commerce. I've started it. It hasn't mm -hmm. done very well, but uh, I decided to separate it from my website and give it a little more love so it can grow and hopefully mm -hmm. to help fund the podcast. And that's tacopod.com. Kind of sounds cool. I'm, I'm it's sounds easier to spell. Great. Yeah. So, so what are you thinking you might kind of start putting into your e-commerce space? Right now, it's just a swag, right? Shirts, uh, hats. Hey, 10K um, tacos. Yes, yes. And, nice. and I have that on my site now, but I want to expand it into one of the things that uh, the podcast has helped me realize, one, is I want to pursue a career in storytelling. And I know that's one of those things that it's easy to talk yourself out of, right? When you're young, you're like, well, I want to be a public speaker. Oh, no, somebody else is already doing that. Oprah right. already did that, right? Okay. And you talk yourself out of it. But, you know, and then you realize, uh, or I want to be a baseball player. And like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not that good. But uh -huh, I realized uh -huh. I was always pretty good at writing. Mm -hmm. And I, I come up with these things called talk quotes. <laughs> and it's yeah it's it's a it's a quote with a little bit of a taco twist to it and and i want to start putting those on shirts and stuff and uh, i trademarked the name so if you want to you know copy it good luck because i'll send you a letter <laughs> <laughs> yes i'll fund yeah. all your podcasts and fund everything <laughs> yeah. yeah and i i've had i've had uh somebody from mexico reached out to me email and asked me if he could use those he's opening up a uh well he already did opened up a restaurant, a, a taqueria, and he asked me if, 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 if he could put those talk quotes on the walls. I said, absolutely. As long as you yeah, put, give me some buy <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as you, yeah, but yeah, if it helps you make sales, absolutely. Oh, uh, that, yeah. That's going to spread your, your word and have people come and find you and talk quotes. That is super cute. Yeah. I but I also, that. I, I also want to get into public speaking. I want to mm -hmm. uh, get into going to, um, you know, I, I do this, uh, when hopefully as it opens up, I did it a few times on zoom where I go to high schools and I talk to students on their career day, because one of the things that I want them to see is that it, you just don't have to be an attorney. You just don't have to be a doctor. That's All those true. professions are great, but sometimes they're pushing, they're pushed by the parents, right? Like That's I want true. you to be That's blah, blah, blah. True. I want to, but if you want to be an artist, if you, and, and so one of the things I asked them, like, like, you know, 10 years ago, if you told your boss, Hey, I want to stand in, I want to sit in front of the computer and I want to be online and I want to, you know, social media marketing for you. And I, we could, he would have fired you 10 years ago. He or she would have <laughs> sure. fired you today. Well, that's one of the, ago, yeah, today that's one of the highest paid jobs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, chief marketing officers are mm -hmm. now in the room with CEOs mm -hmm. because it's, it's here. So a job that may not exist right now might be in the mm -hmm. future. But if you start mm -hmm. developing your communication skills, mm -hmm. your interpersonal mm -hmm. skills, you mm -hmm. start honing in on that, what you like mm -hmm. doing, you could end, you could place yourself in that spot when that's, that takes off. And another mm -hmm. thing I'll tell them is, you know, you like watching Monday night football. And most of them say, yes. And like, mm -hmm. who's the guy or the woman carrying the camera going back and forth? Like you don't mm -hmm. see those. Mm -hmm. So if you like taking photos, you may be able to make a career out of that. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that, that we need to start pushing that narrative that, you know, don't, don't, don't your don't children. like Yeah. If, yeah. Oh, well, my mom mm -hmm. wants me to be a doctor, mm -hmm. you know, but if, even if you go and get your doctor certificate and you become a doctor, you may mm -hmm. not be happy. I've seen exactly. that happen later um, on yeah. in life. I mean, right. Where yeah. people go, you know F how many that, lawyers or coaches right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Doctors. Like, you know, yeah, so coaches right now, and all of them were retired lawyers, retired doctors, retired therapists, seriously, psychologists, people who went PhDs. A lot of them are coaches, coaches, yeah. and they're trying to be influencers, they're trying to, to, to be public speakers. That's what a lot of people are wanting to do right now. So, you have to wonder are these the people who were children who said, I want to be an artist, I want a speaker? And they're like, okay, well, let me go get a real job. You know, yeah. and a lot of them now that everything is opened up so much because of technology, they're saying, I want to coach. I can coach from my house. I can coach from Fiji. I, <laughs> I can coach from the street corner. I can coach from under the bridge. Yeah. So, so I could, so I can tell you another little secret. Mm -hmm. 
my wife is an executive coach. She just doesn't I, tell people. So I decided I she's, she doesn't tell people. She she worked in Silicon Valley for she's still sort of working there. Uh, but, you know, she her is her her expertise is organizational development. I love and, organizational development. <laughs> we need yeah. to talk. <laughs> I'm actually yeah, yeah. No, and, to do more stuff in that area. So I'd love to hear her experience with that. Oh, yeah. that. And and she she works a lot. She works a lot, but and she she'll tell you, I don't like to put myself out there. Um, she's in the back end. She makes sure that like everybody is is trying to be the best they can be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's made a very good career out of it. She 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 she's an influencer without being an influencer. I mean, she impacts people's life, too, as I was like, you know, influencers exist before there was a digital influencer. All of these people who anytime you impact effect, like I I did a lot of stuff with people with events and and organizing and coordinating ambiance. Like anytime that you are creating an environment, whatever that may look like for people, for, for allowing people to express themselves or, or to connect with each other or to feel comfortable, you know, that you're, you're in, you know, that's a, that's a part of being an influencer. And I just, I was actually thinking about this. I love translating things. And I love like what you're saying, like storytelling is a way of taking something that people can really like identify with and visualize and connect with and then like how you did with your the story with your your dad right and then turn it into you know this is what this looks like right now in the way life is you know and people are like you know <laughs> just that that new learning you know i see like fireworks right of neuro, neuroplasticity yeah. neuroscience happens like you know you, you just engage with somebody you generated that trust and intimacy like there are studies that show stories do that build that trust and then now they're it's like fertile soil and then you're like boom and they're mm-hmm. like yes you and, know and <laughs> the the other thing about storytelling the power of it is you know we are all we're all capable of telling stories to influence unfortunately the flip side of that everybody has an uncle that always repeats the same story right well when i was your age i did this and you know back in them and, and like and then as you get older, like, oh, God, I, I don't want to hear that again. And see, that's where the challenge of storytelling takes a wrong turn, mm. because we are all, whether we like it or not, some of us are parents, some of us are not parents, but we are teachers. Uh-huh. Some of us are our leaders, our managers uh-huh. at a company. Uh-huh. If you can craft a good story when you're delivering a message that people don't want to hear, that's when you could impact them. And I'll give you an uh-huh. example. I used to do environmental health and safety. Well, nobody likes the safety guy. They, a lot of people thought that I was like the school monitor, the hallway monitor, every, you know, don't speed. You're going to, no, you can't do that. No, I used to use the power of storytelling to get people to work safer and it was effective in, and I, I judge it. (laughs) I know this is sad, but in my time of working as a safety uh, professional, my goal was to make sure people never died. Right. Because Mm -hmm. that's important. People die at work every day. Mm-hmm. On an annual basis in the United States is about 5,000 people. Mm-hmm. That may be a small number, but think about it. Somebody got up to go to work. That's a, that's a big enough number because that's didn't, somebody who loves didn't like, come that home. person with a family or a yeah. wife or with a mom or a dad yes. who loved them. And, friends. and they didn't come home. I mean, mm-hmm. think about that for a second. They got up to go to work and they didn't come home. Mm-hmm. That is mm-hmm. a tragic event. So, it, you know, I don't want to be like those people like if we could just save one life no let's just have zero freaking accidents exactly. and so my job was to create an atmosphere to make sure that people didn't do a stupid thing because we all do stupid things it's called uh-huh. being distracted yeah right yeah, yeah. From the air is a real on thing. the phone yeah. while we're operating a piece of equipment it could be an <laughs> innocent mistake but people could get hurt so mm. i used to use the power of storytelling to and I didn't want to become that uncle because people would be like, ah, oh. so I would make these meetings as entertaining as possible, nice. making them short. <laughs> you, you don't nice. have to put somebody in an hour meeting just to tell them, please yeah. tie your shoe, please don't <laughs> bend the wrong way. You know, right. you have to wear right. safety glasses, and especially in the pandemic. The first couple of months, nobody wanted to wear a mask, they still don't want to wear a mask. So mm-hmm. I use the power of storytelling to get them to, to at least wear a mask, if not for them, for their family members. And it was pretty effective. Uh, it was mm-hmm. pretty effective. So storytelling could work on a lot of fronts, not just oh, to, yeah. you know, you, know you, could be, you could help it to, to raise your children. 
to mm-hmm. in, in the corporate culture, it's making its way right now. I wouldn't be surprised that in the next year or so, you will see corporate storytellers in Oh, they're already in talking about America. this now. Um, is yeah. your wife on Clubhouse? Yeah, but she's, nah, <laughs> I'm still trying to nudge her in. I want to so, uh, let yeah. her know, because I, I love organizational behavior. I love change leadership and uh, leadership development. And so I found a room or I'm sorry, a club, and they were doing some rooms talking about it. And one of them was talking about the art of storytelling and change leadership, right? And so that'd probably be right up her alley. <laughs> yeah. And they were talking about like how the story plays a role in moving companies forward, how they're using it now and trying to get buy-in and manage stakeholders. I mean, it, it's common sense. That's what we were just talking about. Honestly, anytime you're dealing with people, I and mean, this is because I love translating, right? For me, my big thing is metaphor, using metaphors and bringing that translation so people can really see what you're talking about. It doesn't have to be a complex thing. You can take anything and bring it to something that somebody can identify with. And so like, I love learning organizational theory, for example, right? But it's theory. But I'm like, well, that's the same thing as me coming home. I have an organization at home <laughs> you know yeah. where we yeah. have a way that we're doing things that might be unorganized but there are people and there's a way that we do things and things that need to get done and people that are interacting with each other and moods and business stakeholders and things like that going on yeah. in the house <laughs> no and you bring up a very good point you know in organizations that's a great way to look at it where what's going on in your home it's an organization you know, you have to feed people, you have to keep them happy, they have to have a roof, how do you keep that, do you have the maintenance, right, it just mm-hmm. doesn't happen by itself, mm-hmm. cleanliness, all right, mm-hmm. if you have a sloppy home, chances are mm-hmm. you're working, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you, you know, your brain is a little cluttered, you know, mm-hmm. but then on the other side of that, if you're, if you're very strict, like, nope, no, no, no mm-hmm. then you're not going to get people to buy in, so it's, mm-hmm. there are a lot of similarities, but of course, on, on the scale side of it, the other thing I noticed, too, with storytelling becoming more and more uh, trendy is that a lot of leaders will show up to a, uh, uh, an event or, and like they'll learn some, and then they'll want to go implement it. Not everybody's a good storyteller. Like uh-huh. anybody could be a storyteller, but there's an effective way of doing it. And uh-huh. there are some people who think they know how to storytell. And then they, they try like, like, I don't know if you remember Eddie Murphy delirious, uh, back hey. in the eighties. <laughs> Awesome, yeah, right? He that. told yeah. a joke where, like, you know, I'm gonna tell a joke, and some of y'all, you know, he was, he was referring to white people. He was like, you know, <laughs> the guys gonna try to tell a joke next Monday, like, I don't know, then they stepped on the poop. That's not like that's <laughs> you, you know, you gotta learn how to story tell, you gotta learn and how it's to gotta uh, fit, it's gotta fit who yeah. you are, so that it's real. You can't yes. go tell, if you don't feel comfortable, then you shouldn't tell that story because that's not for you to tell. Tell something yes. that makes sense for you to tell because then it's going to be received well because it's coming from a place that you believe in. It's like selling, which and most people will say, and I don't really like the idea of selling either, but that's just, it's a, what do you call it? It's, um, it's just the way it's seen. All it really is, and it's me bringing things to components, right? All it is, is you, if you're doing it right, you believe in something so much that you want to share it with somebody else mm-hmm, at its yeah. core component. And so as long as it's authentic, there's that word. <laughs> there, it's there, but as long as you truly believe it, it's real, it's true to you, you're not misrepresenting in any way, right? And and it's about you. And then you're not, um, what do you call it? Uh, attached to the outcome for the other person. That's one of the best things I learned when I learned how to coach was, you know, learning how to detach from the outcome. Like you can still care, but it's an invitation, right? It's like, yeah. I love this and I'd love to share it with you, but you don't have to love it, right? Kind of yeah. thing. You're, it's an invitation, whatever you want to do. And I think when you come from that place, people are going to receive you. But if you're kind of like you were talking about um, safety or, you know, in that ex- ex- example of someone telling a story where you're, you pretty much put a guard up. You're like, here we go, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. you're not hearing, it's not getting to as a brick wall that just got erected because it's like, no, I, I, this, is, this is about you. You're not trying to help me. People can sense whenever something there is not quite right or it's not real and it's not honest. They can, it's yeah. an instinct we all have. And so I think that's one of the reasons why uh, my husband says I'm very disarming. He's like, He's like, it's because you just come in and you tell people exactly what's going on. And one of the best stories I say is like, I, um, I was asked to lead a, a, a mom's group some years ago and I'd never done anything like that. I've been in leadership roles, not officially though, right? They're, they call me in when it's an emergency. <laughs> They're like, mm-hmm, yeah. hey, come in and step in as interim board chair and all this other stuff. So I step in when there's problems. But I'm like, I never get to step in whenever it's the beginning. I'm like, finally, I get to step in, you know, <laughs> whenever <laughs> and I, all the decisions have been made and everything's on fire. <laughs> and so um, sure enough I ended up getting pulled in politics but I remember that that first meeting I stood up there in front of the ladies and I was like so 
I just learned about mops five minutes ago. This is true. I didn't know what mops was. <laughs> and, and here I am. Not sure where I got here, but <laughs> and it's just, they cracked up. And it's it's like people, they trust you whenever you, you show up and you're just, you're real. You're like, I just got here. This is y'all's group. You know, it's for everyone. This, the stage does not belong to me. I'm not trying to chain myself to the stage. Y'all are welcome. Because <laughs> a lot of people come, they're very different. And so setting that standard and being just open, open, honest. I don't have it all figured out. You know, my house is a mess. I don't even know how I got here today and I've got the same shoes on <laughs> kind of thing, yeah. right? So, so people love that. It's endearing. And I think when people tell stories from that place, right, of humility and, and just being here, I have this if you want it, but you don't have to take it if you don't, you know, and, and you know those ones like to hear themselves talk. <laughs> you bring up a very good point. The, the other thing about storytelling is storytelling if you start practicing the genuine uh aspect of it you become a better listener and that's one key thing that you want you want superpowers listen <laughs> and some people confuse the word listening with hearing right like <laughs> yeah uh -huh, yeah uh -huh, yeah yeah while they're <laughs> scrolling through their phone but listening it, it it is a skill that all of us could get better at it and once you start honing in on listening, boy, it is, it is such a valuable superpower mm -hmm. because you could negotiate better when you're listening mm -hmm. to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could communicate better. It allows you to be more present. It ha and it allows you also, it improves your speech. You want to get rid of ums and, uh, and, and gaps in the middle, take storytelling classes interpersonal storytelling podcasts will help you get rid of ums. A lot of people want to be public speakers, but they're like, uh, well, you know, um, I want to get rid of the, um, um, and you know, um, the ums start and, and they want to get rid of them, but they, they're not present. Storytelling will allow them to catch their own speed, synchronize, and then they'll be able to speak, even improve their enunciation. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful secret. I'm surprised people don't know more about it. Because they didn't know. They're thinking, oh, well, audience, what are you calling for? But now you're right. There's a lot more. Like, I've seen probably five or six rooms right now, like business, corporate, investing rooms talking about telling stories. It's very much big right now. And this is Clubhouse specifically, but I've just been hearing that that's the new, <laughs> there's always a new thing um, that, that people are, are talking about. And really, it's really relationships and connecting with people and listening. So someone who's taken a story, um, storytelling, and who's master storyteller and you've given us so many different tips and and like you said the the if someone wants to become a better storyteller um better at listening to take a class it helps to get rid of them. i actually did not know that <laughs> yeah. um so with listening or storytelling what is another um really big takeaway that you found that you're like this is something everybody needs to know about storytelling also helps you become a better reader a uh, speed reader almost. And mm -hmm. because it, whether you, storytelling is about generational information mm -hmm. and how else, if you can't see, or if you can't hear, how else are you going to learn what your predecessors did, your ancestors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So reading is one way to communicate. And if mm -hmm. you could improve your reading skills, you could become a better storyteller because then you start identifying what works for you, you start seeing that some of the best storytellers are great writers and they don't even know that. And some of the great writers, they're great storytellers. They don't even know that they're afraid mm -hmm. to be in public. They think, of course, one of the things that people fear the most is public speaking. I still get the jitters even coming on your show today. I was like, <laughs> I was still a little nervous. And that's, that means you're a human being. Mm -hmm. So it's a fear, but it, it's so powerful when you're able to stand up even in front of your own family members and, and tell a story or just remember that first day you decided to hit that hand and they called you up to the stage. I know you were nervous. Oh, I know you're like, still, what I am I going to say? Nervous. I get nervous when they call me up. Sometimes they'll even call yeah. you up there. Yes. And even, yeah. even when I'm up there and I'm getting ready to talk sometimes like that, you know, even though I was yeah. just talking five minutes ago, <laughs> so you know storytelling if you pursue that you could become potentially a better reader and people struggle to read i struggle to read i didn't read my first book until after college 
I just winged it. Uh, oh, luckily, wow. I I sold. I used to show up to class smelling like tacos, and people thought, "Oh, he's cool. He's one of us." <laughs> but you know, and uh, but it wasn't until I took this job in uh, my first stint into safety was uh, it was a risk coordinator. So mm-hmm. I had to be the liaison between the attorneys who were representing the company against injured workers attorneys. Mm. And I had to read all these legal briefs and reading legal briefs sucks. Mm -hmm. And I had to do it. (laughs) So I learned how to, I forced myself, but I wasn't really, I didn't, when you're forcing yourself to do something you don't like, it's Mm -hmm. not really going to work out. But once I shifted or I nudged myself to like improve your reading and you'll bump into more stories. And man, Mm. did that open up a wave and I've been reading more stuff more and more. Uh, I've also taken on to audiobooks, which is almost the same thing as reading, but mm-hmm. it, you're basically absorbing information, whether you're reading it or you're hearing it, mm-hmm. you're, and it's starting to shape you. It's starting to shape mm-hmm. your brain and our brain. It was the first computer. It's full of algorithms. <laughs> it'll connect mm-hmm. with other spots it's here true. and there. That's and it'll, true. It, that it'll help with. you relate to one experience that you had somewhere else. And once you put mm-hmm. those on paper, you will see, you have a story. It's so, so true. It's a and you're definitely a fellow polymath slash renaissance person mm-hmm. with me for sure. And that's a lot, especially with the reading. You know, it's interesting. I did not enjoy reading until I call it my wilderness season. When I started struggling and I didn't journal either. I was like, I don't want to do that. I don't, I don't want to write. I don't want to journal. I didn't consider myself a writer or even doing this, all of this. I did not see myself doing any of it. And um, it's interesting because when I went through that season when I was really struggling and I felt like my brain had thoughts in it, it was just busting to get out and I could not think. And I'm a big thinker, but at that point it was jumbled. And so the only way I could like, almost like it was tangled. The only way I could untangle like a big old mess of string was to start writing things down. That's whenever I could just, I could get it out and it was so clear on paper. I was like, wow, I'm smart on paper. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a wonderful feeling though right i mean you're literally taking a thought and you're making it real because our thoughts they're not real they're like they're, they're not real they're only in our heads so once you take them out and you transfer them via hand or into a piece of paper now they're physically real and then you see them and your brain sees them from a different angle and it, it is a wonderful exercise i'm glad it you bring that is. up it is uh, it was very healing and helpful it helped me get my brain it's like my brain i needed to pull it out to put it back in organized yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is great i never thought about it i'm learning something here you definitely have a treasure here and it's definitely a natural gifting that you have and i'm so thankful that i, I was just i just kind of did a did a did a shot in the dark and i was like hey you want to be on the podcast i mean i don't even know what we'll talk about but i feel like he needs to be on the podcast and, <laughs> no and thank so you so no it's thankful. an honor it really is so, and i feel the same way that you just jumped in i'm one of those okay let's just Let's, let's go to Germany tomorrow. Like, that's me. I mean, so thank you for, for jumping with me uh, into the deep end to just check it out. And I am really excited to check out your podcast now. And if you would tell all of us again where we can find it. We have a website, uh, 10,000tacos.com or 10kcetacos.com. But I'm also in any other major platforms, Apple Podcasts, mm-hmm. Spotify, Pandora, and unfortunately, you would have to put in 10,000, the number 10,000 and tacos and the you'll know you'll get there when you see a taco truck, uh, okay. uh, the tile is a taco done. truck. <laughs> and that's uh, a lot of people think I still have a taco truck, but it's a podcast. And uh, that's where you get it. We're, we're about three, four years now. Uh, we started in August of 2017. And um, I used to publish them every two weeks. Mm-hmm. But lately, it's been harder for me as I've gotten better at storytelling. I want to craft better stories. Mm-hmm. And I've been going through a little bit of a personal, I wouldn't call it a crisis. My wife mm-hmm. and I, uh, we made a big move from California to Colorado. And we're mm-hmm. still settling in. I don't know if you could hear the grinding of the of the tiles being chopped up right now. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> so I didn't uh, hear it. You've got a great yeah. mind. No. <laughs> well, that's great. I learned something. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, and and so I've been uh, people have been reaching out lately, like, hey man, where's the the latest episode? And wow. um, I want to, yeah. Uh, but that's but yeah, the, the last one, the last episode, I will say, um, well, so what happened about a year ago? My father passed away, and that's been impacting me because mm-hmm. I talk about him, and it 
freaking hurts. But you know, mm -hmm. he 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 was such a very important part. He was he was the taquero. When I say a proud son of a taquero, that's mm -hmm. what I mean. And mm -hmm. uh, I want to resume telling stories about him. This world needs people like him. He was a very oh. special man. Very special man. He I believe he was awesome. that. I feel it. Yeah. Like when you told that story in the clubhouse room, like I was like, oh, I just I could feel it. So when you said keeping him alive or 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 through the stories or or keeping his memory or just what he's poured into this world, right? Like through yeah. the way you saw it and sharing it. Like I now feel like I get to know a bit of him too because you share that. And I would think that anyone else who hears you share these was yeah. the same way. So and, that's, and, that's amazing. Yeah. And and he's a he was a taquero. He would never call himself a taquero. He was just the father first. He hit first and foremost, he loved my mom. That was his trophy wife. Aww. He loved my mom like Aww. crazy. Aww. And so I got to see what a man, how a man should be, right? You That's prioritize your, your wife woman must first. be really happy. <laughs> well, I, you know, it is. There's a lot of similarities of, uh, you know, I, I got, we got married late in life. You know, we're, I was already over 40 and she was mid thirties and we're, we're hitting our sixth year and uh, we're, wow. our relationship reminds us a lot about my parents. And, 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 and so he was, he was that instrumental guy. And then I kind of lost my ways in my early twenties and thirties. And it wasn't until I started to see, wait a minute, I grew up with these examples. Uh -huh. What the uh -huh. hell am I doing being a cheater? <laughs> and, I, and I'll say it now. I, I, yeah, I was a cheater and I, you know, most people don't, I was just as lost. I, I used to cheat on women and I thought as long as you don't get caught, you're cool. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to live a lonely life. And mm -hmm. uh, eventually, you know, I, I, I was in a bad relationship where it finally caught up to me and I had a choice and I made the choice. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live like this. I do not want to continue living this life. And unless mm -hmm. I make these changes and it was going back towards, uh, dipping into that taco truck experience, how I grew up watching my dad, uh -huh. love my mom, watching my yeah. mom, you know, be, they were a couple, they, they worked 18, 19 hours a day and then they would go home and be a couple, right? I mean, mm -hmm. can you imagine working with your spouse for three or four hours? They're the, the divorces rate in the pandemic <laughs> skyrocketed. Cause people were like, did. man, it I got to stay home with you. I used You're to look dead. forward You're like my poor, each other. Yeah. Yes, my, my poor scary. girlfriend in the office is struggling. I can't be here. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was a lot of struggle. A lot of stuff came to light. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, yeah, sure. it, it wasn't until I started to draw these stories and I said, I, I got to put these out there. Mm -hmm. I knew I, I loved speaking in public and I could mm -hmm. always, I, I feel like I'm 10% good. I have like 90% to get there. I might do it when I'm 95 years old. Mm -hmm. which leaves me the rest of my life to try to improve, to be a better storyteller right. and to leave a legacy because my dad was, you know, people don't know about my father. Only, only my family knew about my father, my immediate family and mm -hmm. some friends at home in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, no, the world, they, he's a superhero. He brought Aww. tacos to the world. I that's, love that. Yeah. <laughs> that's a super, yeah. I feel like I see a taco truck in your future, whether you'd be running it or not, I don't know, but I could totally see there being, you know, um, either called son of a taqueria, taqueria what did you call it? Son of a, a taca, taquero. Taquero, taquero. There we go. Yeah. Taquero. Yeah. taquero <laughs> or ten k tacos or something. I could see. I'm gonna see that truck and say, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah. It was gonna be. He was gonna do that. Do a franchise or something. Tacos are huge right now. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, the, they've been around for like ten thousand. They've been around for like ten thousand years. <laughs> but yes, true, but like, but they're coming, but everybody's coming. You have shirts that say, feed me tacos and tell me I'm pretty. <laughs> yeah, I, I call that phenomena. I call it people are Columbusing tacos. In it's other true. words, there's some That's people, true. they're, they're, they're true. finally going like, oh my God, I thought Taco Bell was the real taco maker, but it turns out, and I, I take, the, they call them soft, soft tacos. I'm like, there's no such thing as a soft taco. It's a freaking <laughs> taco. It's a hard shell taco. You should be calling them hard shell tacos. Yeah. But there's no such thing as a soft shell. I mean, that's an oxymoron. How can a shell be soft? Right. So I, I guess. They just don't know. Maybe some education. You know, maybe yeah. it's a part of it. You story tell. You give them some taco education. And then. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have a few episodes where I, I, I get a little angry and I, you know, I start biting back. And some of I refer to people that are that are, you know, there's there's naive. There are people that never have tasted them, but then there's people, there are people rather that say that Taco Bell is better than these other tacos. 
they, they are trust me that's why I i'm on a mission that. i was like so, yeah there's there yeah, they 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 have <laughs> some of them have you know make america great hats on uh but that's a different story <laughs> but i call them facos right you can't say <laughs> instead of tacos they're facos <laughs> i love all these taco taco you call them um puns you know yeah well like, I, I like a ta <laughs> yeah tacos uh um, yeah, so, you know, I, I you know, I, again, it's an honor to be here because I get a chance to tell people you get to, you know, help me let others know there's a podcast, a storytelling podcast about a family growing up in the taco truck. And mm -hmm. there's some lessons in those. And I believe that, you know, one day it's going to trickle down and it's going to get to Oprah's desk and she's going to go, oh, my God, you get a taco, you get a taco. Oh. <laughs> and she's going to bring me onto her show and I get to help spread the word of, of a taquero. I also I also want to raise the, the bar on the word taquero. It's not just the street vendor. These are executive chefs. They're entrepreneurs. They're, uh -huh. they're people like my father. They made uh -huh. people smile. They made they fed people on a daily basis. My dad didn't oh, do it I for the that. money. He made it for a I living. Love. He made it for his wife for his family to make a living to survive in America. But he mm -hmm. also put a lot of smiles on people's faces. That's like, it's a culture great. thing too, yeah. that really has a big part of, of, I mean, I know I grew up with, with um, like right now, like street, oh, street tacos, so good. you know, those are huge around here right now. And yeah. my neighbor actually invited us over. There's some really good, um, um, I forget what you'd call them, but they have the, the really good seasoned meat and they're really good, like, um, and so they'll go and get them from over there. And do, make do you know where Cedar Creek is? Yes. It's quite a ways on 71, I think, east. Um, right? Yes, you I take 71 so. east, about 10, 10, 15 miles east. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know what the cross street is, but Cedar Creek is not that big, right? But it's right mm -hmm. by high school. I imagine there's not a lot of high schools in Cedar Creek, uh -huh. but there's this little trailer called Mi Barrio. Mm. Right there. And those tacos, like they're nothing special like the you see on Instagram, like all these beautiful colors of cheese. And like these tacos are just plain tacos. Those are the best they ones. They got this great taste. The meat is is uh, seasoned well. The That's tortillas the are part. warmed up. I don't up. need all that extra stuff. I need some good seasoned meat. Just That's cilantro, like the onions, and the salsa yeah. on the side and lemon. But that it's the way she warms up her tortillas, this lady does. Are they the homemade way, too? I'm, I'm, I don't think they are, but they're, they, she could pull them off. I don't know. It's just when you bite into those things, you're like, yeah. Okay, I'm writing that down. Did you, did you hear that cat? Did you hear my cat? I have five cats, and uh, one uh, of them is talking. May, maybe, I don't know. That's okay. I have, I have a little baby that sort of sounds like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're willing to take a little drive down to, I know it's it's on the opposite end of Cedar That's Cedar okay. Creek. We will drive for Cedar good Park. food. Like, we would, yeah. we would drive. We would drive for good food, and because and, it's hard to find good food. So um, I'm on. I'm going to take a picture of it and send it to you, too, when I'm there, and be like, <laughs> <laughs> no but more importantly it's these uh they're very good tacos that represent a certain part of mexico and those are real tacos those are tacos that are just they don't have to be fancy there's not a huge line to get in sometimes there's a line but that just speaks to their popularity because only good? the locals know it right and, well uh, i'm excited so, says body me body me barrio ba me, me barrio. is my barrio is like hood uh, mm -hmm. It's a red trailer. It's right on the corner. There's a gas yeah, station there. Okay. Uh, I should Google get it. the street, but it's on. Yeah. Mi Barrio. It's a, okay. Well, I'm going to check it out. Well, I am so glad that you were able to come on today and we were able to do this. And, and if you're looking for guests, I'll come on and tell a story or two and, and on your podcast. And guys, again, it's 10ktacos.com or any of the platforms. It's on the platforms. You'll need to spell out 10,000, which I think you're definitely worth those extra zeros. I could tell you to get on iTunes. Yeah. 10,000 tacos. And yeah. when you see a, a taco truck, that's, that's you know, there's there's that's quite funny. a few tacos podcasts out there. This is different. This is a storytelling podcast. I don't really, you know, I'm, I'm trying to shift two guests, but uh, it hasn't happened. I, again, I just started to tell the story and it went from there. So it's helped me become a better storyteller. Mm -hmm. And even the last, the latest episode, I had my brother call me, uh, in tears and it was good oh, uh, that's, that, that's how i got validation and i i've learned how to audio mix i've learned how to 
you know, I take the same approach that my parents took uh, to, to learn to run a business. Mm -hmm. I said, I've never podcasted before. And I learned how to, um, how, how to record. I learned how to use the software, how to mm -hmm. add music. So I've gotten a little bit better. Some people say I'm pretty good. I, 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 I'm not there yet. Maybe when I'm 98 years old, I'll be like, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'm be pretty much good. sooner, much yeah. sooner, sooner than <laughs> I bet. Well, well, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You this is an coming. honor. This is oh, a beautiful you're, conversation. You're an honor sharing this. You're a beautiful person. I just love connecting with beautiful people. And guys, thank you so much for joining us again on the Extraordinary Zone, a segment on opting out. So I always say opt out. <laughs> <laughs> do you do what you love to do? I love it. Cedro is a great example of this. Um, he says, I love storytelling. So I'm going to find a way to do storytelling. So Please, you know, if this speaks to you, reach out to him. You can find him on Instagram. He speaks on Clubhouse. You can go to his podcast if you want to hear more stories. What I love is that everybody is more accessible these days. And, and so yes. many that I've met want to help if there's something that you're needing that he can encourage you or even just listening. So thanks so much for coming. We will see you next time. Love you.